Good evening. Thank you for being here today for our presentation on the ITEEA STEM School of Excellence Award. This is a new award for the 2019-2020 school year and we're really excited to tell you all about it. First off, my name is Jennifer Bulin. I am the director of the ITEEA STEM Center for Teaching and Learning where we do curriculum. We produce the EBD Engineering by Design curriculum for pre-K through 12. We do assessment work. We do research in partnership with higher ed institutions and other entities. And we provide lots of professional development. So tonight I'm here to tell you about this new award. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. First off, what is the STEM School of Excellence recognition? The ITEA STEM Center for Teaching and Learning recognizes outstanding schools for their commitment to provide a robust, integrative STEM education program. We know this is going on all over the United States and beyond. We know so much good stuff is happening and we want to be able to officially recognize those schools where great things are being done and we want to be able to help enable those schools and those teachers and administrators and PTA groups, all the stakeholders who are helping to provide this experience for students, we want to be able to recognize them and help to facilitate their sharing what's been effective, what those best practices are that are emerging, share those things with the greater STEM education community. So the award is about that as well as simply recognizing schools where this great stuff is being done. So the awards are made at two levels. The top level is the STEM School of Excellence and that's when the application materials come to a total of 110 points or more for the previous academic year. And then we have the STEM School of Merit. So if a school is just getting started with this work and the points total anywhere from 85 to 105 points, then that school is off to a really good start this year. And we are looking forward to helping bring them to the next level. So what is integrative STEM education? We talk about this a lot in all of our programming that ITEA does and that the STEM Center does. So integrative STEM education, we look to the definition provided by John Wells and Mark Sanders and then later Jeremy Ertz worked on this at Virginia Tech. Integrative STEM education is operationally defined. I know these are a lot of words, but I think they're really important. So operationally defined as the application of technological and engineering design-based pedagogical approaches to intentionally, that's a really important word, intentionally teach content and practices of science and mathematics education through the content and practices of technology and engineering education. Integrative STEM education is equally applicable at the natural intersections of learning within the continuum of content areas within this continuum of educational environments and also academic levels. So with that said, how can we put this very wordy definition of integrative STEM education into practice? That's what we're here to talk about. A um, couple items of business first. The notification and recognition for this award. I know that's um, been on a lot of your minds in the last few weeks since we've been very actively communicating about this new initiative. The application window for the 2019-2020 school year is May 1st through November 15th. We went ahead and opened it a little bit early for those who had time to put it together before they left for the summer. Um, and it's still open until November 15th. Applicants will be notified of a decision no later than December 15th of this year. And that will give everyone plenty of time, we think, to make plans to come to the conference and accept that award during the general session. 
Award recipients will be recognized at the ITEEA International Conference in Baltimore in April of 2020. Actually, that's March 2020. And we'll talk about those dates um, at the end of the webinar, but just know that the conference is March 11 through 14 of this year with a few events in the pre-conference day of March 10th. And so we hope to see everyone there in Baltimore. Those recipients of the award will be presented with a banner and a certificate for display in the school. We have a couple other ways that we are cooking up right now to recognize principals, to recognize outstanding teachers, and more to come on that in the coming months. But we do know that we want to recognize everyone um, in several ways there at the conference. We're also going to recognize the recipients in the Technology and Engineering Teacher, which is ITEEA's flagship journal. The TET is a peer-reviewed journal. It's a valuable part of your ITEA membership. It's published eight times a year. It's a tool for technology education professionals from elementary teachers through junior high, middle school, high school classroom teachers. We also encourage its use and see its use in teacher prep programs for teacher educators. The content includes reports of current trends in technology and engineering education, technology and learning activities, program articles, news, a calendar of STEM education, technology and engineering education events, and lots more. So we will be recognizing all the recipients in the issue following the conference. Who should apply for this award? Any school representative is eligible to submit the application on behalf of the school. It does not have to be the teacher, it does not have to be the principal. You are free to decide who is going to spearhead these efforts, pull all the materials together, and sometimes that can um, more effectively fall to a parent volunteer, a PTA member, a member of the leadership um, team of the school, and or the PTA. Um, it could also be at the district level, a district administrator, STEM coordinator, superintendent, parent volunteer, you name it. It doesn't really matter who pulls it all together. There is some information about the school and about the teachers that will have to be input into the application. Um, but if you identify one person to pull all of that together, then that's a good approach. So how does the school qualify for this award? The application contains a menu of qualification options. You're, no one is likely to hit all of the options. That's, it's a pretty long list, um, but we want this to be as inclusive as possible. And of course, we are interested in hearing from all of you um, if there are kinds of events, if there are categories of qualifiers that we've overlooked this year, then we are certainly interested in hearing back from those of you who go through this process um, about qualifying events that we might want to include next year. Documentation is uploaded to support each qualifying event. So for example, if you've run a STEM careers event at your school, then we would want to see some documentation about that. We would hope to see some photographs and some outcomes of what went into all of this and what, what were the outcomes for students, what were the outcomes for teachers and community members. Some of the qualifying events are ITEEA initiatives. We know a lot about those. Um, but we also want this to be open to other kinds of programming that your school is doing. This is not um, just ITEEA centric necessarily. So, other qualifying events are non-specific to any organization in or beyond the STEM education community. So I want to be real clear about that. ITEA membership is encouraged, of course, but it's not required for participation in this initiative. ITEA members receive a significant discount on the application fee. So $390 for the application fee for this year versus $600 if you're not a school or professional member. So let's talk about the qualifying events. First off, STEM Career Pathways. 
does your school produce completers, meaning students have gone through a STEM career pathway course of study? And what you would need to do is describe those pathway requirements and talk about your numbers of completers in the year 2018-19. We know that this can look a lot of different ways. So that's as much detail as we put into the description of what this looks like. Obviously, if you're at an elementary school, then you're not going to be graduating seniors who are going into a career or who have received articulated credit in some way. Um, that might look very different at the elementary level, and we just want to hear about it if you have something else in place. This one probably will be more um, easily attained by those in secondary, specifically high schools, but again, it's not necessarily limited to that if you're doing something different at a different level. Next is STEM outreach or a STEM community service project. And here's, um, here are a few shots from High Point Regional High School in New Jersey. Um, they held an event and part of that was plant 40 trees today but there was more involved in terms of um, an integrative stem approach to what all that was about um, just one example yours might look very very different from that um, but your school participates in a stem outreach or community service project during the 2018-19 year so that was last year and you'll need to provide a description of the project and include photos Talk about the outcomes. Next, teacher collaboration on an integrative STEM project. This is really, in a lot of ways, I think where the rubber meets the road when it comes to demonstrating that you are teaching at an integrative STEM school, at a STEM school, because you are figuring out ways, creating ways for two or more teachers to work together on integrative projects. It does not mean that a science teacher, a technology teacher, an engineering teacher, and a mathematics teacher all have to work together on a project. It could be that just two of those came together and figured out a way to do it. And so that's what we're looking for. We're looking for really solid examples of how that worked, what does it look like, um, maybe talk about the challenges in that and how you are able to creatively overcome those challenges. Because look, we know that it is not easy. If it were easy, everybody would already be doing it. So include a brief description of the project, focus on the integrative nature of the teaching and learning, and include photos. Next is diversity in STEM education. Your school sponsored an initiative, project, something focused on diversity in STEM education sometime last year. Provide a description, include photos of what that was all about and how you really achieved um, gains in that space. Next we have a family-oriented STEM event. Did your school sponsor a family-oriented STEM event at some point during 2018-19? You'll need to provide a description of that project, upload photos, and really what was the bridge? What bridged the student experience, the teacher experience of this STEM event with that family outreach? How were families brought in and what was achieved through this collaboration and expansion beyond the classroom? Next is a STEM career fair. So this would be a school-sponsored STEM career fair or something similar during the 2018-19 academic year. Again, description, photos, outcomes. Um, and we know that you might not necessarily have called it a STEM career fair. It might be a career fair with an emphasis on STEM careers in some creative way. And so we would like to know what you did, how it worked, um, what were those details that made it something special above and beyond the regular career fair? How did you address integrative STEM education? 
Next, ITEA memberships. Either your school had an active ITEA Integrative STEM school membership last year, and that continues at the time of application. You'll just need to provide your membership number if that's the case. Um, or school staff are ITEA individual members. You could have professional members there in your school. And so um, your active member status for 2018-19 would need to be verified and then your member status at the time of your application is also required. So please make sure that you include those individuals' member names and numbers. If you're not sure, I know that that information can sometimes get misplaced. We don't want that to hold up the works. If you're not sure, um, especially if you're asking someone like a parent volunteer or a school administrator who might be a step removed from your personal member information, um, if you're asking them to take care of pulling the application materials together, then just let that person know if they have any questions. You or they can simply email ITEEA at ITEEA.org with your questions about that and um, we'll be able to help you. Next qualifying event, a conference presentation. So a teacher or an administrator from your school gave a STEM or STEAM education conference presentation during the 2018-19 academic year at a national or international conference. And so here's one of those that goes beyond um, just the list of things that ITEA has going on. Um, so it could be the ITA conference, it could be NSTA, it could be NSTA STEM Forum, it could be ASEE, Engineering Education, it could be NCTM, Mathematics Group, NAEA, AERA, um, name your acronym, some other national conference. As long as it was a STEAM or STEM oriented presentation, that's what we're looking for. So please provide the conference title the date of the presentation, the presentation title, and the names of your presenters. And you're certainly welcome to upload other materials that tell us more about what that presentation was about. Um, and I'll talk with you in just a few minutes about ways that we can continue getting the word out about your work and keep you moving forward with some of these ideas. Maybe you started with it last year or in recent years and you want to continue and expand on those ideas. So we'll talk with you about how you might be interested in doing that. Next, ITEA conference attendance. So teachers or administrators attended the 2019 ITEA National Conference in Kansas City. And if so, provide the name or names of the attendees. Now at the ITEA conference we have what's called the administrator strand and this is a specially selected list of sessions and events. There's a reception, there are a couple of breakfasts, there are guest speakers who come um, to speak specifically to administrators and this could be administrators at the school level, district level, state level, you name it. Um, we're looking specifically at the concerns of administrators in the administrator strand. So if one of your administrators, specifically your principal, participated in this, then that is one qualifying event. The ITEEA STEM Showcase is another one. Teachers or administrators participated in the STEM Showcase this past year in 2019 in Kansas City. And I'm gonna show you a little bit more about the STEM Showcase because we also want to include the award recipients for this year in next year's showcase. Um, in some way, it might not necessarily be a whole table that you're responsible for pulling together. Um, maybe just a small poster where you and a few other um, award recipients are there to talk about some of these qualifying events that you're doing at your school and spread the word about those, share, um, share what works, develop this community of practice. So 
The ITEA STEM Showcase is an exhibition of best practices in integrative STEM education. Showcases include, but are not limited to, K-12 teachers, teacher educators, administrators, undergraduate and graduate students, informal educators. The sky's the limit here if you identify as a STEM educator in some way, um, then you are eligible to apply to participate in the STEM showcase. So the showcase provides a forum to feature an idea or technique or best practice that's related to learning activities, marketing material, career guidance, facility design, program design, assessment methods, equity, classroom and lab management, um, all kinds of considerations that are important to facilitating quality STEM education. So showcasers are asked to illustrate a single element of technology and engineering education, STEM education, integrative STEM education, that they feel they have exemplified. And as of right now, that application is still open for this year's STEM showcase if you do want to do an entire table. So there's a link here and then we'll share these links after the um, presentation tonight with all of those of you in attendance. Next qualifying event, a peer-reviewed STEM or STEAM education publication. So someone on the staff of the school has published a paper and it's fine if they co-authored the paper. That's not something that we need to get too far into the weeds about. If they participated as an author on an article that's peer-reviewed, um, you'll just need to provide the complete article citation and if the article is available online, we'd like you to include the URL to that. Next, do you teach engineering by design? That is our integrative STEM curriculum. Is that taught at your school? So at least one EBD course was taught in the 2018-19 academic year. List the teacher's name and course. And we recognize that other curricula are out there and being used. We know that because of our processes for developing the curriculum, um, we know that that's a solid integrative STEM curriculum and so we included that one. We're not really able to assess other curricula, so um, that's why that one is included and not others. Next is Idea Garden. So someone on staff posted something of substance to the Idea Garden at some point during 2018-19. And the Idea Garden is sort of, um, it's a step beyond a listserv. It's a community for sharing information, ideas, um, lessons, approaches to teaching, um, solutions that you've come up with. It's a very interactive, collaborative space online. So if your staff is involved in that, then just let us know um, what was posted and when. Next item, STEM Connections. Have you posted your school's event in STEM Connections? And that would require, uh, or it would have required a write-up of what was going on, the who, what, when, where, why, all of that. Um, so if that is something that you've been involved in in the past, use that as a qualifying event. If it's not, then all you really need to do is just Google ITEA STEM Connections. You'll get some information there. And we'll also share more information about all of these um, ITEA initiatives following the webinar. Next, Technology Student Association. So, do you have an active TSA chapter at your school? Did you have one for 2018-19? And this is just, was your chapter active during the year? This is not about competitive events, um, not for this qualifying event on the list. That'll come in a minute. Um, so simply provide your TSA advisor's name and your chapter number, if that's the case. 
And then an additional qualifying event is that you participated in a TSA competitive event during 2018-19. So provide your TSA advisor's name, provide the event, and of course that's just the bare minimum. We would be interested to know more about that experience. What did your students do? What were their takeaways? Um, what did you learn from that process? That's really what we're aiming for in terms of establishing some best practices, some examples for other schools where people are interested in doing STEM work. Next, professional development. I mentioned that the STEM Center for Teaching and Learning produces all kinds of professional development. We coordinate, we organize, we write, we um, run these events. So did your staff member participate in an ITEA STEM Center for Teaching and Learning professional development event during the 2018-19 school year? Um, so that might have been an iSTEM Education PLC online. It might have been an EBD Summer Institute. It might have been an EBD Professional Development Webinar. Um, whatever the case, provide your staff member's name, the dates, and the title of that professional development event. Next, the STEM Spotlight, iSTEM Education and Practice. This is a series of one-pagers, sometimes they are actually two or three pages, where we're really focusing on success stories. We're sharing stories of iSTEM initiatives, integrative STEM initiatives, all across the United States and beyond. Um, are pulled together in sort of a narrative. Um, really, we shoot for one page just to keep it short and sweet. And um, then we provide additional resources for people who are really interested. But um, what we do is post these on our website and share about them places like STEM Connections because, again, we're very interested in sharing best practices, sharing good experiences so that other people can either directly use them or adapt them to their local needs and environments. Next, STEM lab safety protocol. Has your school established a safety protocol for your STEM lab? If you haven't, then as soon as you get off this webinar, please start working on that. Um, if you have students in a STEM lab, then you really want to tighten up your safety practices. Um, so what is that protocol and have you posted it on your classroom website or your school's website? So it's not just about do you have something slapped up there. It's about have you gone through the steps to really think through what safety means in a STEM education lab. How are you communicating all of that with students and parents and teachers, other stakeholders, other people who want to see children go into these laboratories, learn a bunch of good STEM content, and then come out safely. So provide that link to your safety protocol. If you don't quite have it up and running yet, then work on that this academic year. And we do have some professional development running all year long on STEM lab safety. And once you've come out the other end of that in May, you will have that safety protocol in place, put that up on your website, and that will be a qualifying event for next year. Next, the ITEA task force. Have you, has someone on your school staff been involved as a participant on one of the task forces? And so if so, just provide that participant's name and the name of the task force. If you're interested in being part of one of those, for starters, you can go to the um, ITEA.org site, look for um, leadership, and look for the mission statement. And when you find that, um, again, we'll share these links that I've mentioned with you after, but um, you can look at the strategic plan, look at the strategic initiatives. If one of those resonates with you and you want to contribute to that, then we will put you in touch with the right people so that you can join 
those task force efforts. Next qualifying event. Has someone on your staff, a teacher and administrator, served as an EBD course author, reviewer, or focus group participant? All those roles are extremely important in continuously providing an up-to-date, um, well-written, well-thought-out EBD curriculum. And so we look to focus groups and reviewers throughout the revision process to look over what we're doing, give us feedback at various points through the year, through the revision cycle. Um, and the more the merrier, we wanna hear from people, especially on this focus groups. We wanna hear what's working, what's not working, what we could do better. And so if anyone on staff has participated in one of those roles for 2018 or 19, then points are available for that work. So, how do you apply for this award? First off, there's a link here, and that it also will be in this list of links, this very long list now that we're going to share with you after. There's an online form that you'll need to complete and attach copies of all the required documentation. So the first step might just be to go through, read through the application, um, get a better sense of what we're looking for. And all, all the qualifying events have been listed here. I've talked about all of them. So that's one source of that information, but you'll wanna look at the application format and look at where you need to upload a, um, photographs or your lab safety protocol, something like that. You'll just wanna pull all that information together. If you are an ITA member, either your school has a school membership or the person submitting is um, a professional member of ITEA, or they're submitting on behalf of that professional member, that's fine too, then they'll need to pay the application fee. Just click the button that says pay member fee, and there'll be a field where the membership information has to be entered. If you're not an ITA member, then you can either stop everything, join ITEA, and then come back at the reduced member rate, or go ahead and apply for this year's award at the non-member rate and um, just click the pay non-member fee. So remember, you've got to do both steps. Make sure that you click one of the buttons to pay the fee and also submit all of the required documentation. And make sure that the person handling the application takes care of both of those pieces. If you are not quite ready to submit an application this year, if you're looking for guidance in establishing your STEM school this year but aren't quite ready for the award status, then we encourage everyone, teachers, administrators, PTA, other stakeholders, to use this application as a guide. If your school is reaching for a handful of these qualifying events, then that's a really good start to being able to say, yes, we are a STEM school. We are an integrative STEM school. So use this as a guide. Create a strategic plan for putting a selection, selection of the qualifying criteria that best work for your school, your population, your leadership, Put that selection of qualifying events into place right now during 2019-2020 school year, and then you'll be able to apply for the award for next year. Um, send a STEM team of teachers and administrators to the 2020 ITA conference in Baltimore. Have them attend the admin strand. Um, there is a reimbursement available for administrators who come to the conference. That's part of the admin strand. Have them attend the STEM showcase. Have them attend the relevant conference sessions to inform and inspire planning. Get involved in all that ITA and the STEM Center for Teaching and Learning have to offer in support of those efforts. 
So now we are going to end the recorded segment of tonight's webinar and then we will do live question and answers. If at any time you have any questions about the qualifying criteria, about the process, about any of the um, ITEA or STEM Center initiative that I've mentioned, please email us at itea at itea.org.